so good morning one and all and today we are here uh, we are here to start the dialogue series under the aegis of iqac isc organized by isf college of pharmacy moga punjab and today we have the speaker of the day with us dr manish kumar he is currently working as assistant professor in the department of pharmacology in amrita school of pharmacy amrita vishwa vishwa vidya peetham kochi kerala His research interest is basically focusing on cancer research, molecular biology, nanotechnology, pharmaceutical evaluations of drug candidate, regulatory toxicology. And today, uh, he will be talking on the role of PD-1 and PD-L1 checkpoint inhibition in cancer immunotherapy. So we welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Arthi, for such a nice introduction. Yeah. So, yes, uh, uh, shall I share my screen? For yes, sir. Yeah. Please. So, can I off my camera so that uh, the connection will not interrupt? Definitely, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, its uh, slides are visible in PowerPoint mode. is visible sir yeah yeah i am yes. just changing the slides if it is you can see that right yes sir it is changing okay okay so okay. let's start so good morning to one and all uh, i am dr manish uh, working as a assistant professor in amrita school of pharmacy and today i am here to talk on the topic the role of pd1 pdl1 checkpoint inhibition in the cancer immunotherapy so as the cancer immunotherapy is such a complex topic it's like a solving a complex puzzle but today i will uh, present it in a way that it will be easily uh, understandable either you are a graduate or post graduate student in the pharmacy so starting from the introduction so uh starting from the cancer when we hear this word cancer what does the word cancer mean to you so when i hear this word uh, it's like a terrifying illness uh, with a diverse group of disease that is characterized by the uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells that may be uh, lead to the life threatening condition it is a group of heterogeneous disease and it is definitely a significant public health concern globally which cause immense suffering to the patient as well as their families due to its deteriorating effect and due to high mortality rate so according to cancer research uk the cancer is when the abnormal cells divide in uncontrolled way and they start invade eroding and destroying the normal tissue so as we can see uh, in, uh, uh, surrounding the normal tissue if there is a malignant growth it will start pressurizing the surrounding tissue it will start eroding the tissue and sometimes it will start the metastasis means uh, the invading the cells over all over throughout the body so there are generally we can divide the cancer into five major cancer groups uh, like carcinoma that is uh, a skin condition it will start from the skin or the tissue that is covering the internal organs and it have subtypes like adenocarcinoma basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma then uh, another form is lymphomas or myelomas these cancer actually begins with the cells of the immune system and then leukemias are the cancer of white blood cells then brain tumors uh, the cancer of the cns system then sarcomas uh, sarcomas are begins with the connective tissue or the supportive tissue of the body like bone cartilage fat muscles and sometimes blood vessels so these are the uh, main cancer groups and now talking about the available therapy or treatment options so as we all are aware that uh, the various uh, treatment options are uh, like chemotherapy 
that is using the cytotoxic agents to for the selective killing of the cancer cells then surgery of cancer is still the one of the main treatments for many types of cancer then the radiotherapy which involves the using the high power radiation to destroy the cancer cells or to prevent their relapse of the cancer uh, then hormonal therapy it includes uh, uh, the drugs which uh, diminish or reduce the amount of hormone uh, which are responsible for the cancer growth for example certain types of breast cancer which are hormonal positive in that case tamoxifen is like uh, we can give example of tamoxifen which may use to block the effect of estrogen so that it may slow down the growth of breast cancer then targeted cancer th therapies involves targeting the particular signaling pathway to stop the cancer cell proliferation then for certain types of cancer condition stem cells or bone marrow transplantation uh, options are also available they are generally for the uh, types of leukemia or lymphoma conditions and they can be done with the high dose of uh, I mean, simultaneously with high dose of chemotherapy then immunotherapy which i am going to discuss in the my presentation immunotherapy means the using the immune system to fight with the cancer then the gene therapy is also an emerging field in the cancer treatment it means the altering the genetic material uh, within either uh, within the cancer cells or within the patient immune cells to fight with the cancer with the help of siRNA uh, CRISPR techniques uh, etc then apart from that uh, complementary and alternative therapies like uh, uh, herbal medicines uh, uh, naturopathy or yoga that is for the support with the conventional medical treatment to improve generally for the quality of life or to feel better or to cope up with the side effect uh, these therapies are helpful like complementary and alternative therapies so now uh, i am coming to the immunotherapy what exactly the immunotherapy means so immunotherapy actually it uses our immune system to fight with the cancer and it works by the helping the immune system to recognize the cancer cells as a foreign material or and to attack the cancer cells and also to relieve from the inhibition of immune system that immune system uh, that allows the tolerance of the tumor growth and certain immunotherapies are these days are the standard treatment for some time types of cancer and for some types of cancer it's, uh, it's still in the trial phase but it certainly differs from the chemotherapy because chemotherapy targets the rapidly dividing cells and it is also differ from the targeted therapy because uh, targeted therapy interfere with certain key molecular events in the tumor environment that drives the tumor growth and its uh, proliferation so now i am coming to uh, the general basics of immune system that how immune system work actually so as we all aware that our uh, we have two types of immune system like innate immune response then adaptive immune response so in innate immune response we which we have by birth and mainly in that macrophage will recognize the obvious invaders like bacteria virus <coughs> or any sick cells and they will engulf that and adaptive immune response will generally for against the unfamiliar invaders which may like foreign cells or infected body cells so generally b cells will mark the invaders using the antibodies and macrophages will engulf them and for uh, like cells infected with certain bacteria viruses or pathogens first cd4 t cells will help and coordinate uh, cd8 plus t cells to kill the infected cells as we can see in the diagram but what will happen in the cancer condition actually cancers are sick body cells 
these are not infected but we can say mutated cells so how our immune systems is going to cope up with the cancer cells so generally immune system include the lymph glands spleen wbcs and normally it will spot and destroy the faulty cells in the body and stop the cancer development but a, a cancer might develop when uh, the immune system recognizes the cancer cells but it is not strong enough to kill the cancer cells in some condition cancer cell produce such a signal that will stop the immune system from attacking it and sometimes cancer cells will hide or escape from the immune surveillance so uh, immune therapy is basically to address these types of uh, problems so coming to immune response to the cancer and when we are going to look into the history in 1909 actually paul andrich uh, postulated the cancer of immunosurveillance and he hypothesized that uh, the complete eradication in the presence of activated immune system but after that actually our immuno oncology modern immuno oncology have to travel a long road because it took almost uh, almost 120 years from the college toxin therapy uh, from 1890 to the first modern immunotherapy that is iplimumab in uh, approved in 2011 so actually it's almost 120 120 years and the story of college toxin treatment is also very interesting actually dr kole was dealing with the cancer patient and he noticed that a patient with cancer was improved after a severe bacterial infection so he sparked with an idea and he started culturing those pathogens and injecting them to other cancer patients and unknowingly actually he was activating their uh, immune systems so unknowingly he was using the immune uh, immunotherapy concept and uh, it also took a longer time because t cells were discovered in very recently in 1961 and even the different types of t cells will were distinguished even after later and there were many misunderstanding about the cancer and immune system one of them was that t cells are unable to identify cancer because initially cancer is unsymptomatic and cancer cells are too similar to the normal cells so due to these misunderstanding we set back for a long for the immunotherapy for the many years but uh, now we know that t cells can identify the tumor cells and how they are recognizing the antigen that we can understand by this diagram actually a transformed cells of the tumor will express one antigen that is taa that is tumor associated antigen and actually that will be identified with the dendritic cells by mhc first and mhc second and mhc first will further activate the cd8 plus t cells which will kill the tumor cells uh, through perforin and granzymes and apart from that cd4 t plus cells will release the interferon gamma interleukin 4 and interleukin 10 cytokines which will going to sensitize the tumor cells for the cd8 plus cells and apart from uh, certain uh, co stimulator molecules like b7 lfa1 cd40 are also present on the dendritic cells that will help to identify the tumor cells and help immune cells to recognize the antigen as not self so that that can attack and destroy the tumor cells so there are various types of antigens are expressed by different types of cancer so when we are talking about normal cells normal cells as in the diagram we can see that normal cells will express the normal cell protein so that there will be no t cell response but in certain type of 
carcinoma mutated cell protein will present that will be definitely identified by the t cells and uh, it will act activate the t cell response sometimes the product of oncogene or mutated tumor suppressor gene like p53 protein will also act as a antigen which will further activate the cd8 plus t cells sometimes overexpressed or aberrantly expressed cell protein will act as a antigen and in case of oncogenic virus infection that will trigger the virus antigen specific cd8 plus cells so in such a way that they will stimulate the immune response so basically in tumor micro environment three key cells are involved for the immune response first is apc antigen presenting cells that are nothing but dendritic cells which will identify uh, the antigen and present them to the t cells then further t lymphocyte which will become activated by the apc and to recognize and destroy the cells containing foreign TAA and then B lymphocyte which will produce the antibody specific to a tumor associated antigens and other immunomodulatory cells will also involve in this tumor micro environment they, they, these may be Treg cells then natural killer cells then macrophages myeloid derived suppressor cells so basically immune cells plus stromal cells will make the tumor micro environment and which will keep the immune surveillance against the cancer but this tumor surveillance will be escaped by the tumors because of the tumor immuno editing so tumor cells will actively inhibit the tumor immunity by engaging the normal pathway of immune regulation that serves as a checkpoints in the immune response so how immune evasion can happen by the tumors that we can understand through this diagram sometimes if the loss of antigen in the uh, mutated tumor cells then no antigen then no t cell recognition will be there then sometimes in the mutation in the mhc gene so class 1 mhc deficient tumor cell will produce no t cell in stimulation and then it will escape the immune surveillance then further uh, if uh, presence of some immunosuppressive proteins that we can say the checkpoints uh, on the inhibitory cell surface and it will inhibit the t cell activation and by such way uh, t, uh, this immune cells uh, sorry the tumor cell will escape the immune e evasion and basically immunotherapy are the address uh, such concerns actually so immuno oncology therapies may activate the patient's own immune system to engage with the cancer cells and there are many recent advancements are there in the immunotherapy so various immunotherapy involves the checkpoint inhibitors like anti ctla4 and anti pdl1 some on oncolytic virus then ca use of car t cells therapy that is chimeric antigen receptor then using the cancer vaccines then by specific antibodies like tce that is t cell engagers so now coming to our main topic like using the checkpoint inhibitors uh, for the immune therapy so if we will see the timeline of the immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy or ICI therapy uh, in early uh, 1985 first T cell antigen receptors were identified and their functions will be were elucidated then in 1994 to 1995 the biological functions of the ctla4 was discovered then from 1999 to 2004 the inhibitory function of pd1 and pdl1 signaling was discovered then from 2002 to 2005 the anti-tumor immunity by pdl1 and pd1 blockage was discovered then the 
clinical trials of the immunotherapeutic agents started so early clinical trials of ctla4 inhibitors started in 2005 then from 2011 to 2014 inhibitors of ctla4 and pd1 and pdl1 were approved first time for the use in the advanced melanoma when 2015 to 2017 further approval were granted for the ctla4 and pd1 pd1 l1 inhibitors then recently in 2019 there are investigations for the icis in combination with other agents for the increase of the cancer visibility by the immune system then in 2020 there were 15 re re Uh, recruiting or active phase third trials were ongoing for the in immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy so coming to the immune checkpoint ctla4 is a, actually cytotoxic t lymphocyte antigen 4 receptor that is expressed on the t cells and james ellison first discovered it in 1990 and actually it is a most important break or we can say tolerance against the antigen in the lymph node and iplimumab was the first checkpoint inhibitors that was approved and that is basically a anti ctla4 monoclonal antibody so what is the mechanism of cytotoxic t lymphocyte antigen 4 actually in normal condition the dendritic cells as we can see in the diagram dendritic cells having the mhc it will bind with the t cell receptors and it will also co stimulate through the binding of b7.1 and 2 with the cd28 present on the t cells but in tumor micro environment what will happen that cells uh, Uh, having the expression of ctla4 that will have more affinity for the binding to the b7.1 and 2 receptor that will inhibit uh, the activation of t cells so if we are will use the iplimumab that is specific uh, antagonist for the ctla4 receptor so again we can activate the t cells and there will be the immune response against the tumor cells now coming to our main topic today for the immune checkpoints inhibitors uh, so pd1 and pdl1 is the major signaling which will uh, inhibit the t cells uh, signaling or activation in the tumor micro environment so actually pd stands for the program death it got its name because it was discovered that the other immune cells with this receptor or ligand axis were prevented from the destroying each others so pd1 receptor normally present on the lymphocyte and it has two ligands that is pdl1 and pdl2 so pdl1 typically expressed on the immune cells so that it can prevent by destroying own immune system and in certain types of inflammatory conditions also tissue and tumors will express the pd1 receptor so that we can uh, prevent uh, the our own tissue from the attack of uh, immune cells and the pd1 pdl1 axis is a most important break or tolerance in the peripheral site of infla inflammation to prevent the peripheral tissue from the immune attack but this pdl1 is like a invisible shield for the tumors to hide from the immune cells and during the inflammatory condition our body will release the interferon gamma which will also upregulate the pdl1 expression but it was seen that in a double knockout gene model or uh, double knockout of the pd1 or pdl1 mouse model it will develop the mild tendency towards the autoimmune disorders so it shows that the importance of the pd1 pdl1 axis in the normal physiological condition and the neolumumab and pembrolizumab were the first anti pd1 monoclonal antibodies which were developed and approved uh, 
So in addition to T cells, PD-1 receptors are also expressed on the surface of macrophages and B cells. Its two ligands PD-L1 and PD-L2 are expressed by many tumors and inflammatory cells. PD-L1 expression will correlate with the poor clinical outcomes of anti-cancer therapy. But it also linked with the likelihood of the response to the targeted immune check checkpoint inhibition therapies. That is the advantage of PD-L1 positive cancer cells. Now we are trying to understand the, the program death receptor 1 and its ligands mechanism in the T cell in inactivation. So we can see that in resting T cells, PD-1 is expressed on the surface of T cells and upon activation, it is engaged by the two ligands, uh, PD-L1 and PD-L2, which are present in the tumor microenvironment. So we can see that antigen presenting cells will give the co-stimulatory signals when the B7 will bind the CD28 receptor. But the, despite of presentation of uh, this signal, T cells will be inactivated due to PD-1, uh, PD-L1, uh, binding so because they will produce the inhibitory signals so when we are using the pd1 pdl1 inhibitors these these will block these signals and by the co-stimulatory signals active t cells will be there that will identify tumor cells and the start killing the tumor cells so in simply we can see if PD1, PDL1 binding is present, then tumor killing is off. But if we will interrupt this binding by using anti-PD1 agent, then it will start uh, start killing the tumor cells by identifying the uh, tumor cells. So that is the basic simple mechanism of tumor killing in the presence of anti-PD1 or PDL1 inhibitors. So this importance of this finding was recently recognized by awarding 2018 Nobel Prize in Medicine to the Ellison and Honjo for their research on the CTLA-4 and PD-1 receptors. And there are various therapies now approved or in the developing phase. So as we know that anti-CTLA-4 first approved uh, antibody was Iplimumab that was fully humanized IgG1 monoclonal antibody. Then various anti-PD-1 uh, monoclonal antibodies are also approved in which Dostarlimab is the very famous name and that was recently in the news also. Then uh, many anti-PD-L1 uh, agents are also either in development phase or approved. So recent news, if we see in uh, almost in last year in June, there was a news about a miracle drug that was com that completely cured the uh, cancer participants in the phase two trial, and that agent was actually dostarlimab. It uh, many articles published in the reputed journals and many news were there in the New York Times and DTV. So that's why I am taking the case study of dostarlimab in the cancer therapy. So dostarlimab is a type of PD-1 inhibitor. It is a monoclonal antibody that basically blocks the PD-1 receptor by an allowing the immune system for the better recognition of the uh, uh, cancer cells and it can attack the cancer cells. It is developed by the GlaxoSmithKline and it has shown promise in treating the various types of cancer. And it was first approved in the by the both uh, United States and European Union in April 2021, indicated for the treatments of adults with the DNA mismatch repair deficient DMMR with recurrent or advanced endometrial cancer. But actually it was in the news due to this results of this phase two clinical trial, which was conducted by MSK Cancer Center in New York. Uh, 
and this trial actually included 12 patients with locally advanced rectal cancer who had been diagnosed with the DMMR and all of the patients received the dostarlimab therapy every three weeks for the six months. And after six months of treatment, all of the patients had a complete response. That means that there is the completely eradication of the tumor or we can say tumors were disappeared completely. So FDA granted the accelerated approval of dostarlimab for the treatment of adults with DMMR condition with the recurrent rectal cancers. And this study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, although it is very small trial and it also include very uh, less number of patients, but still it is very promising therapy and first time in the history that it completely cured all participants in the clinical trial. So definitely dostarlimab showed a promising result in the cancer therapy. But apart from these miracle results, now we are coming to the limitations of the uh, anti-CTLA-4 or anti-PD-1 therapy. So basic question is why do tumor engage the CTLA-4 and PD-1s actually? So actually CTLA-4 uh, in tumor which induce low level of B7 co-stimulation because due to the preferential engagement of the high affinity receptor of CTLA-4. But actually very few types of tumors will express the CTLA-4. And similar condition that PD-1 receptors, for similar condition for the PD-1 receptor, that some tumors may express the PD-L1. So this phenomena remains incompletely understood because these mechanisms do not easily account for all tumors. And because tumor evasion is a complex mechanism and it can involve various other mechanisms, not just interaction with the CTLA-4 or PD-1 receptors. And sometimes the immune response to the tumor also varies depending on the specified type of the cancer or the genetic makeup of the tumor or the individual immune system it will depend so that's why there are many challenges uh, against this pd1 pdl1 inhibitor therapy first is the cross talk in immunotherapy cross talk is basically a complex interplay between the various components of the immune cells and definitely apart from ctla4 and or pd1 receptor other things are also involved like T regulatory cells will also inhibit the uh, immune signals by immune system. So understanding these interactions can reveal that why some therapies work for the certain patients and not for others and why after certain time the treatment might stop the working. Another unmet need in immunotherapy is the development of predictive biomarkers which can identify those patients which are likely to respond to PD-1 or PD-L1 therapy. And therefore, we can reduce the exposure and risk of toxicity for those patients. So actually, the estimation of PD-L1 expression in the tumor microenvironment could be a valuable predictive biomarker in selected tumors. Apart from these to these challenges, definitely these therapies are more effective than the uh, anti-cancer vaccination because the vaccines have to overcome the tumor-induced tolerance. So definitely compared to uh, vaccination, these therapies are more effective. So coming to limitation, according to one article published in 2016, the various response ra rates against the anti-PD-L1, PD-1 therapy, the range is 10% to 30% depending on the tumor type. So for lymphoma condition, it was high, 62%. And it was lowest re response rate was seen in the sarcoma or ovarian cancer. That was almost 8 to 9%. 
and apart from that one meta analysis they have compared the conventional treatment with the uh, patients with higher pdl1 positive and with the patients with, uh, with who are, were the pdl1 negative and they find that objective response rate were significantly high in the pdl1 positive patients but not in the pdl1 negative patients so this limits the therapy then development of resistance typically response as we have seen the 20 to 40 percent response rates so there may be the risk of developing the resistance then tumor mutational burden so sometimes actually in the pressure of the selective therapies tumor will find a new way or alternative pathway to evade the immune system and definitely if we are using these therapy it will develop the adverse reaction of inflammatory autoimmune reaction but that is manageable or that will be decided according to risk benefit analysis one major rate limiting factor is the higher cost of these therapy like in united states the cost of dostarlimab therapy is almost eleven thousand dollar per vial in india it is almost 3.4 lakh rupees per vial in australia it is almost 18000 uh, australian dollar per dose so apart from this limitation it is also important to predict the response by by the estimating the early biomarker or predictive biomarker so that we can identify those patient population which are going to respond the pdl1 therapy so now coming to the future directions actually there are many ongoing research and clinical trials on pd1 inhibitors they are also dealing with the prostock phenomena and there are also studies in which they are developing the strategies to overcome the resistance to the pd1 inhibitors then uh, there are also possibilities to see the potential future application of pd1 inhibitor in other cancer types apart from the rectal cancer or endometrial cancer so now coming to the conclusion of my topic so i want to conclude my topic that during this talk we explored the pd1 pdl1 pathway and we see that how inhibitors like dostarlimab are changing the scenario of cancer therapy then we have seen that pd1 and pdl1 inhibitors offer a great hope when the conventional therapies fails they may significantly transform the cancer treatment and with ongoing cancer research on these pd1 pdl1 inhibitor we can say that definitely we can able to overcome the resistance and understand the cross talk so definitely the future of these inhibitors are very promising and as we continue to grow in the scientific on the basis of scientific knowledge to uncover the complexity of the cancer and the immune system therapies like dostarlimab and definitely it will mark a new era in the oncology and immunotherapy of the cancers so thank you all for listening uh, with patience thank you thank you very much sir we are really grateful for your valuable insight into cancer targeting and with a special focus on immunotherapy you have discussed a different therapeutic approach for this incapacitating disease and thank you for such a great session sir we really appreciate the time and effort you put into the uh, content and thank you once again for giving us your valuable time thank you dr manish for this wonderful talk we highly appreciate thank you so much thank you sir and thank you arti for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, this uh, topic of my area of research and test and thank you very much and definitely i hope that in future also yeah. we can have such meetings thank you definitely, definitely. arti ma'am you can close the recording also yes sir.